This is Stephen E. Arnold. Dark Cyber 2021 is our third series of videos about online access related to the dark web, cybercrime, and lesser known internet services. This week's program includes four stories the most gullible people for online scams, facial recognition, a cyber kickball, an unintentional recipe for Amazon scamming superpowers, and the Boeing MQ-25 drone. Here's a test question for you. What cohort is most likely to fall for online scams like phishing, smishing, and spoofing? The answer, according to which, a UK information service, is people between the ages of 20 and 34. But isn't this group the thumb typer generation? How can this informed cohort be so gullible? And the answer surprisingly comes from the always hip IBM Corporation. The reason is that the behavior is a result of pandemic induced digital reliance. Dark Cyber thinks IBM is trying to say that more users want convenience, they take advantage of easier access, and their ever twitchy fingers. For more insights about today's security environment, just navigate to the URL shown on your screen. The U.S. government published its long-anticipated 2021 report about facial recognition technology. Keep in mind that the U.S. government consists of dozens of executive branch agencies, a legislative component, the judicial units, and there are dozens upon dozens of badge and gun entities within these massage constructs. And I've not yet mentioned the Department of Defense and assorted lower profile agencies. Now, why am I talking about the size and the number of silos in the federal government? The principal conclusion of this 92 page document was a way of saying, get organized. But listen to the official language. By having a mechanism to track what non-federal systems are used by employees and assessing related risks, for example, privacy and accuracy risks, agencies can better mitigate risks to themselves and the public. Now, the report was created for U.S. congressional requesters, and it's interesting because it mentions some of the companies providing controversial facial recognition technology to the U.S. government. Now, the Dark Cyber Research Team did some poking around and pulled from our archives a 2019 document published by a U.S. government agency. And this document is called Face Recognition Vendor Test, or FRVT. You can still download a copy from the URL shown on your screen. Now, this FRVT identification document does not provide a comprehensive list of facial recognition methods or the vendors providing the technologies. In the 2019 document, there are references to algorithms and vendors. Now, I want to point out that the editorial approach of those writing U.S. government documents is different from the logic of a news story or a short item in Substack. Neither the 2021 report or the older 2019 report explains why the federal government licenses so many different facial recognition systems. The 2019 document includes graphs which make it obvious that there are primarily very narrow differences among the best known systems marketed by companies like Thales Group, Dermalog, Megville, and Shanghai Yi2 Technology, and others. One of the companies mentioned in both reports 
the 2019 document and the 2021 document was a company called Vigilant Solutions. The report does not explain that Vigilant Solutions is an important part of Motorola Solutions. Neither of the reports makes particularly clear that facial recognition systems for law enforcement are similar. The majority of the systems accept an image from a mobile phone, a web crawl of an open source image collection, or a group of pictures provided by a third-party provider operating uh, like a Veritone type of company. The image of a suspect is then matched to the images in these databases. And when a probable match is identified, the system outputs a list of images, the picture, and a probability of match score, for example, 75%. Perfect matches are rare indeed. The investigator must use the outputs as clues. And the reason is that the accuracy of any facial recognition system varies widely due to the quality of the source image, the threshold set by the developers for a minimum acceptable match, or the smart software is simply not able to make sense of the data. The investigator has to figure out what the matches mean and then use old-fashioned techniques in order to creep closer to a verifiable match. Despite the furor over facial recognition, the approach is little more than substituting a human witness who has to flip through a book of mugshots with software looking at a source image and trying to find an approximate match in an available database of known persons of interest. I want to point out that neither the human approach or the smart software approach is able to operate with 100% accuracy. Accuracy for smart systems fed low quality images is terrible. And when the source image is pixel perfect and the system tuned like the engine in a SWAT vehicle, you can hit 90% or more accuracy. To sum up, why do investigators in the federal government try out every new facial recognition system. The 2021 report mentions that Clearview AI, a company which has ingested millions of images from social media, is currently in use at more than a dozen federal agencies. But the report doesn't explain why this relative newcomer is so popular. Well, Dark Cyber's answer is the Clearview Image Database. Many companies offer pattern recognition software, but the big contracts will go to the companies which have the highest number of good images and solid metadata. I don't need a new report to state the obvious or present glittering generalities which are simply never going to be implemented within government entities. A dark cyber spotted an individual's explanation of how scammers took control of his product. The explanation, which you can read at the link shown on your screen, is actually a criminal how-to or a recipe for defrauding consumers who are buying products on Amazon. You can learn how to hijack a legitimate product, and that information is likely to lead to more Amazon exploits. If you want to follow the steps for creating a successful Amazon product hijacking, the article explains how the scam works and the procedure is easy. The burden for addressing this type of vulnerability falls on Amazon, not the vendor. The departure of Jeff Bezos in early June and the addition of gratuitous Amazon principles does not change the fact 
that this organization provides hothouse for unethical, if not criminal, activity. Amazon has floated above the turmoil of solar winds, but that is more a matter of good fortune. The AWS platform is a greenhouse in which some very exotic scams can flourish. Can you believe the reviews on Amazon's e-commerce site? Can you trust that the product you order from Amazon will be what the listing originally described? Amazon has evolved into a data sphere in which many interesting things take place with little scrutiny from regulators, Amazon management, or the victims, people like you and me. Who pays attention to Amazon? Dark Cyber thinks that bad actors have pegged the company as an important component in the underworld's firmament. The Boeing MQ-25 Stingray is an autonomous drone capable of refueling F-18 Super Hornets, F-35C fighters, and other aircraft. Plus, the MQ-25 operates from an aircraft carrier and integrates seamlessly with catapult and recovery systems. This drone can fly a pre-programmed route or be operated by ground pilots. An F-18 approaches the MQ-25 and connects with the fuel line and nozzle, which in military speak is called a drogue. The refueling capability frees up many carrier-centric resources and extends the range of an F-18 by 40% or more. Many details of the MQ-25 remain classified. However, the U.S. Navy reveals that the autonomous drone augments existing refueling methods and is a force multiplier. For more dark cyber news and information, read Beyond Search, our free weblog about online services and sources. This is Stephen E. Arnold logging off. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.